What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to talk about beats and bars and uh, <clears throat> why they're important. Um, when I use the term beats, I'm not referring to the overall uh, produced beat as in you made a beat or I'm a beat maker. Uh, I'm talking about the individual slices of time within music. Uh, for example, if I play what's on the screen now, it's a very simple uh, drum pattern, but it, ha it, it takes up four beats. And uh, let me just play it so you can hear what I'm talking about. So if I count the beats, I'm going to wait till it returns back around to the beginning and I'm going to count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's basically my, my timing, right? One, two, three, four. Those are my four beats. In an FL Studio, the, the beats are uh, represented by the change in color in the pattern. Um, and so the, you see these dark gray, then it goes to kind of a brown, then another dark gray section, then a brown section. If I take off the, uh, the hits there, you can see it clearly on this top line, what I'm talking about. Now, the first uh, button in each group is where the beat is, where the beat starts. And then the beat occupies some time until the next beat hits. So in this case, I've got on the one beat, a kick, on the two beat, a snare and a clap, on the three beat, a kick, and on the four beat, a snare and a clap. And because this takes up four beats and then it re repeats itself, uh, this is what's called 4-4 four, four time. If you see it written down, it's usually like a four and then a line with then a four underneath it or a four slash four uh, time. And basically what that means is four beats make up one measure. Now a measure uh, is also known as a bar, but basically what that is, it's just a way of dividing the song into uh, into pieces that aren't so tiny that it's hard to describe time. Uh, for example, if I if this one little button, uh, this is actually representative of uh, of a sixteenth note. So rather than say, oh yeah, my song is, uh, you know, uh, a thousand sixteenths long, you know, or something ridiculous like that, you can just say, yeah, I've got a hundred bars uh, in this song. Or if you're talking to a, uh, a rapper and you want him to drop some, some rhyme for you, you could tell him, yeah, give me 16 bars of, of, of rap or the chorus or the hook is going to be you know, eight bars with a four bar pre-chorus or something. It's like, it's a way that you can refer to the timing of the music and communicate it with other people and you'll both kind of understand what, what you're talking about. So this is a bar or a measure of music. Um, and then the way you would obviously make music is by stringing bars of music together uh, to make a, a song. Um... And that's pretty much the, the, the most basic way I can explain it. But I do want to touch on a, a couple of other things. When it comes to counting music, um, you always want to count the beats. But sometimes I've, I have had emails of people who have some trouble counting the beats. And it's not something that uh, most people really have learned through a video or through someone teaching them. It's kind of something that we all pick up kind of naturally. Um, and what I mean by that is we can normally listen to some kind of music and bob our head to the music. And when we're doing that, we're instinctively uh, bobbing our head on the beats. So if I played a song, and uh, let, me, uh, let me browse to a song. I'm off the screen here. I'm going to browse to a song, and uh, I'm just going to play it. And it's kind of low, so hopefully you can hear me okay. 
but I'm gonna I'm gonna start counting where I'll be bobbing my head. So let me let me hear the song for a second and kind of get into the groove, and then I'll start counting. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, an interesting thing that you heard when I just did that is the music broke. It like dropped out completely. When I hit the one, the music also kicked in on the one. And then I was going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And every time I'd say one, you'd hear this little horn hit going on, which, you know, which lets me know, hey, I'm locked into that, that groove. I'm locked into it because when I hear that horn hit again, I was like, whoa, okay, that's where it hit on, on, my, on my last count. So I knew I was, I was locked in. But basically, that, that natural sense of rhythm that at least I know I have, and, I, and most people I know have it, but they may not know what it's called or how to, uh, how to uh, explain it. Um, but that's just kind of a built-in thing. And if you don't have that, uh, I'm afraid that your chances of being successful in the music industry are probably zero because this is like one of the most basic things uh, and I'm sure most people have it. It's just you don't know what it's called or something. Uh, but the, the purpose of this tutorial isn't to teach you necessarily how to have that rhythm but just to let you know how to explain that rhythm. When you're talking to someone, it's it's useful to be able to say, yeah, you know, I'm going to go uh, two bars and then, uh, you know, three beats. And then I'm going to drop out on the fourth and come back on the one. And, you know, when you start uh, explaining to people what you're doing in that respect, it's going to make sense to them instead of you trying to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to play for like 22 seconds and then I'm going to drop out for three seconds and then, you know, it doesn't make sense that way really so learn how to explain yourself musically uh, when you're talking about time in uh, in beats and when you're talking about beats and you've got four beats um, well then you've t then you can con consider that a bar or a measure and then talk about that I do want to talk about a couple of other minor things uh, before I let you guys go and that's just the uh, the sense of time and energy when we're talking about um, tempo. Uh, obviously, uh, higher tempos play faster. So if I go to, let's say, 150, and I play this beat, uh, maybe it sounds like, you know, the beginning of a Prince song or some disco song or something, but it's fast. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's higher energy than, let's say, something at 70, which I'll play now. And something at 70 is going to be more laid back. This could be a slow R&B joint. You know, this could be uh, maybe even just some slow... Uh, reggae song or something you know but it's obviously lower energy and then you've got in the middle where kind of where rap lives uh, or where hip-hop music lives and that's kind of in the 90 ish 85 to 100 really but i'm going to go to 90 and we'll play this and that has a nice bounce to it too but what i wanted to talk about is uh, specifically um the rhythm of of a beat can be changed without changing the the or the energy of a beat can be changed somewhat without changing the uh, the tempo. So I've all, I've got it set to 90 uh, as my tempo. But you're, what you're going to see is I'm going to insert I'm going to fill in a hi hat here, and uh, whereas before my beat sounded like so. When I put the hi-hat, and you can see the hi-hat's kind of in a double time. It's, it's filling in every other one on the, on the pattern. It gives it a little lift, a little bit more energy. 
and I'm not going to say it's faster, but it might sound a little bit faster. It sounds like it's just got a little bit more behind it. And if I if I double these guys up even more and make them hit every beat, then it sounds even a little bit more energized and a little bit more faster, but it's not really faster because I haven't changed the tempo at all. The beats are still the same speed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the beats are still happening at the same speed, but the hats help give it a little bit of energy to make it sound more alive and more like if it's moving more so be aware of that um, you know don't don't necessarily focus in on on the hats if you're listening to music you focus in on the on the snares actually and the time between the snares as the the kicks may not always happen on the one and the three so what I'll do is I'll just you could see I don't have this on the one anymore uh, but when I play this it's gonna sound funny initially but your brain will lock into the groove based off these snares you know your brains gonna hear those snares and then it's going to adjust its thinking so that the, the beat sounds okay now if your brain is you know if you've been alive within the past five years or so you're probably going to recognize this this sounds like the uh in the club beat boom 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 okay i can't i can't sing i know that but but you can see how your brain kind of picked it up your brain said oh, wait a minute those snares i'm used to those snares being in a certain position and uh and just locked in and said okay and got into the groove hopefully it did because if it did that's a good sign it means uh it means you're not a lost cause um but we can use little tricks like that to uh you know to make the beats more interesting and 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 things like that so anyway i think i'm uh i'm exhausted all my uh beats and measures uh information uh that i have for you guys so uh Hopefully you now know how to explain yourself when you're when you're talking about music and time in music and you can use that to uh, communicate with your fellow uh, musicians and collaborators, um, you know, in, in, in a good way. And if you don't know your beats and, and you're having trouble doing that, well, the only advice I can give you is listen to a lot of music, uh, specifically dance oriented music, because it's the easiest to kind of lock into jazz will probably, you know make you go crazy if if you can't uh nod your head to the beat right now uh, blues might be in three quarter time which will drive you crazy so uh just try to learn it try to understand it uh, most people it's second nature to them they just don't know it so hopefully it is for you and uh i will i will talk to you guys in the next tutorial